we have a nice little lineup. Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Gooch for the second version or the second episode of Tech Talk. And uh, today we're going to go over smart switches for your home. Now, not specifically smart bulbs. That'd be like Philips Hue, things like that. Uh, those are a little bit different in a category that is on replacing your your wall switch with a smart switch rather than replacing the bulbs themselves. This is definitely a better scenario, especially if you have a fixture that really you almost couldn't replace the bulb in. Or if you have a fixture that has a whole bunch of bulbs in it anyway, why would you replace all the bulbs with smart bulbs rather than just replacing the smart switch? Um, so these are three of three switches out there that are distinctively different from each other. And there are pl uh, a plethora of other options from other smaller companies, things like that. Um, but the reason that this is not, uh, you know, I, I said I, in my first video, I tried to do, I'm going to try to do one of these once a week if I can, if not every other week. But um, I tried to hold off because this one actually comes out the day that I'm actually shooting this. And that is the Ecobee Switch Plus. Uh, this guy, the Lutron Caseta series, is uh, a little bit different in terms of that it actually requires a hub to operate uh, and then I have the much less expensive Insignia Wi-Fi switch. All three of these have a different uh, way to use them really and they are all three different in terms of how well I would actually rate them. Um, let's start with the most basic so this is the insignia smart switch and there's a lot of other smart switches out there from other companies like tp link i uh let's see we uh Wemo has one there's a whole bunch of them a whole bunch and they're all fairly similar in that they just basically put a switch in there that it can be controlled over wi-fi via well in this case this one actually has apple HomeKit, uh google assistant and amazon's uh alexa integration as well um, so this one actually has full integration with all the various speakers and things that are various voice assistants and everything out there in addition to keep being able to control it from an app. Now, I will tell you this. The app, the Insignia app, is, is terrible. Absolutely terrible. It is a pile of garbage. And this switch, when it works, works fine. Uh, pushing the button on the wall always works. But over using your the voice assistants, every so often I'll have to reassign it to my Amazon uh, assistant. I'm going to keep doing that, I guess. Um, Siri always seems to work with it whenever it boots up and connect, reconnects to Wi-Fi, but I seem to always have to reconnect it to uh, Amazon. Uh, and Google typically works as well. Um, but that's just how they work. Although I've had to actually have Google work with it again a couple times as well. So it's just kind of funny how this kind of is not the most reliable smart switch. If something happens where I have to restart or my power goes out and it comes back on, there's not a guarantee that this thing's going to come back on and just work right away. Um, and that's where you have these direct connect switches. First, they they do require a decent amount of Wi-Fi signal strength in order to work because they're in the wall rather than with antennas out in the open. And they're right next to a, a line of power coming in. So they get a little bit of interference, I think, from that regard. Uh, so you really have to have strong Wi-Fi signal where these are going to be placed. You can't have a Wi-Fi signal that just works through your smartphone. You really have to have a strong one where you're actually going to place these. And uh, they're just not as reliable from what I've found so far. Uh, and that's probably going to be brand to brand. But this one specifically, not the most reliable. The Ecobee Switch Plus also is direct to Wi-Fi. But it's a lot more reliable so far than what this ever has been. So um, take the whole in the wall with Wi-Fi, obviously brand to brand. But these cheaper ones don't seem to, uh, to grab onto Wi-Fi as well. So it's just on, off, and then smart control. Uh, setup on this was a pain in the butt, uh, which is actually why I haven't done a video yet because I've done a couple of them and I just it's just I don't have it tweaked yet. So I still have videos coming out for this one. Um, but, uh, yeah, not one that I'm going to recommend for most people, to be honest. Yeah, it's only like 40 bucks. Save your money and spend it elsewhere. Best way to put it. The Caseta series, uh, Caseta series is a smart hub version where you have to have a smart hub, similar to how Philips Hue needs a, hu a hub in order for their bulbs to connect. So the bulbs, or this, in this case, the switches, 
are not connecting directly to Wi-Fi. They're connecting on a different frequency directly to their hub that you need. So this is a starter kit. Now the starter kit, I think retail, it starts about a hundred bucks. Uh, you can find it for a little bit cheaper, like 95 somewhere. Uh, I think right now on Amazon it's 95 And I will have links to all of these if you want to take a peek at those. Um, so not, about, 90, about 100 bucks for the, the starter kit here. It comes with a smart switch, but it is a dimmer switch. So it's not just on off. You have varying levels of, of brightness. Um, you can also control this with all three assistants, both Amazon, Google, and uh, Siri. All three of them also work with this one. The smart hub is basically what makes that work because this is a Apple HomeKit hub, but it also does work with Amazon and Google as well. Uh, that hub, basically like any of the other small hubs, they're a little box that wire directly to your router and then separate the frequency for their switches off of your Wi-Fi. So if you have an older router, this actually is always a better way to go because it's gonna pull those devices off of your router, off of your, I mean, your Wi-Fi, so it's not bogging down your Wi-Fi for your other devices, uh, which is, is actually a good thing. The bad thing is that you now have another device that you have to place next to your router, and so eventually your router starts getting cluttered with devices. That's what I found, at least. Um, it does come with a remote control uh, that you can obviously use, it, to be honest, in two different scenarios. So in this case, if I have a room that has two switches on uh, you know, across the room. Uh, you can basically use the main switch as one, one, and then the secondary switch, the, the actual remote, as the second switch, basically, and then it'll actually control. There are ways to actually do this with uh, various setups with other uh, uh, models that they have. Um, this, I do actually have a fan in my bedroom. This does work with the fan, although they re they recommend they have a, a non-dimmer mode one that just is on and off. That one actually has a, a higher wattage and a higher capability, higher amperage capability than this model does, and that's the one they recommend for fans. I don't use my fan very frequently, but if I have it on all the way up, the fan will work, uh, but I don't leave the fan on and turn the fan on on the switch. So that's probably makes, makes me a little bit different. I only turn the fan on in bed when I'm needing it. So I pull the little lever. Uh, so I'm a little bit different than, than probably than, uh, than some people. So that said, uh, if you're looking to have one that, that definitely controls a fan, I would definitely recommend not the dimmer version. Um, but that said, it, it does have the power, uh, at least for at least mine. Uh, the, the app works really well. I've never had an issue with this, to be honest, with power going out, power coming back on, and not being able to control it, even with all the voice assistants out there. Once you get it connected, everything should be solid and golden. So this is one of those that is very reliable and works very, very well. I have actually had this for over a year, and it works fantastic. Now we're onto the brand new device, and that's the Ecobee Switch Plus. And this is where we're going to take a little bit of a turn, because... While this is very similar to this, um, it also has a lot more capability and is a lot more reliable than something like the Insignia one. The Ecobee actually has the Alexa Assistant built in. Uh, so you can actually talk directly to this. Essentially, it's like having a, uh, an, an Amazon Echo Dot that's built into your Switch. Now, it does not have Bluetooth capability. Uh, and, and it doesn't have any of the drop-in or message capabilities like the actual Amazon products do. It's going to be more similar to a third-party product. Um, it's While you can play music with it, it's a very simple speaker. But it gives you the capability of integrating Amazon's Assistant into your home without having to use desk space. It has not only that, so that's a great capability where I can just tell the light to turn itself on or off. The microphones built in are actually very similar to the Echo microphones because from across the room, it'll actually be controlled fairly well. But there's other things like motion sensors. This has a motion sensor in it, so it knows whether you're in the room or not. If you come into the room, and these are all things that you can actually turn on or off if you don't want it to sense motion. Um, but motion sensors, you come into the room, it'll turn the light on automatically for you. When you leave after a while, if it senses no motion, it'll turn the lights off for you. And now these, both of those are separate features that you can turn on or off and control. The third feature that is different is there's a night light built into it. Uh, so when you have the light off, the night light will turn on. So it's kind of neat in how it actually operates. It's pretty cool, to be honest. Um, and then there's another thing that is not currently active, but is coming shortly and this is specifically for those people that already have the ecobee thermostats 
this actually has one of their temperature sensors built into it. So rather than buying another sensor to put in a different room, you can put this smart switch in there and it'll do all of the things I already mentioned in addition to acting as a separate sensor for your Ecobee thermostat. So there's a lot of potential for this specific guy. Uh, the Ecobee Smart Plus currently is in pre-order. I uh, will be actually shipping, I think, on the 26th of March. Uh, and it's about, a, it's a, I think it's pre-ordering at 100, or 99 bucks here. Uh, so that's in the US at least. Uh, so what these are, are three distinctively different ones. Um, from the various ones I've, I've tried, I've tried the, the Wemo, not in my home, but I've tried the Wemo. Uh, I've tried uh, the, I think it's the TP-Link, the other one I've tried. They're decent. They're similar to the Insignia, but definitely much better app experience. Uh, the Wemo actually, to be honest, between the three of them, I think was the best. It also had dimming capability, though, so that's kind of neat. Uh, I really don't care for dimming. Even though this is dimmable, I rarely use it, to be honest. Uh, on and off function is really what I want, is what I crave, and I definitely want to be able to, oh, I, you know, I, I, like there's many, many times I've been sitting in the living room looking down the hall and seeing lights on, and I don't want to get up. I just want to say, turn those dang things off. Uh, trying to tell my kids to go turn off their lights is a pain in the butt. So like, this is actually in my, one of my daughter's rooms, but how inconsistent it is in using, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to be taking it out and replacing it with something in the near future. Uh... The Lutron always works. Uh, I have this in my master bedroom currently. I have this in my studio actually currently, which is great because I walk in and out of the studio when I walk in, lights are on for me, I'm ready to go. I don't have to worry about uh, fussing with it. I come down to my studio a lot of times with boxes and arms. So a lot of times I would always turn the light off, uh, on and off with my elbow, which is why I actually, uh, you're a little over your pack. I replaced the standard switch with a push switch. Um, so it was great to actually get something that I didn't have to worry about that anymore. And that's the basics in terms of v some varying differences in the market. Now these are just, like I said, these are just three products of a very large lineup from various um, services. But hopefully I touched on some things that maybe when you go out there and look for a product, these may be things that you might want to actually pay attention and look for. The reason I like these three is that they work in all households with all assistants. And they integrate with, if this, then that, they have a lot of integration. My requirement in my house when I started actually doing things is because I have iPhones and because I already had Amazon Echoes, I had to have integration on both of those services. All three of these fit that. And that was where I started. Now that I also have a Google Home product, it is something that I would like to have because it gives me open options. So if for some reason, a year from now, the HomePod becomes the absolute best smart speaker. Well, I already am, I'm already set. If the opposite happens, it becomes a piece of garbage and Google Assistant comes out with something that is so much better than what the other two are offering. Well, my Switch is, I don't have to play around with those. They're already set, I'm good. All I'm worried about is the speakers that I've already bought. And you can always sell those. So all I'm saying is there's a lot of options out there. There's some fantastic options out there, to be honest, other than just the three I have in front of me. It's just that out of these three, at least, these two specifically are two that I can recommend for about every household in America uh, and probably other places, parts of the, of the world as well. Um, but they, they work really good. They're very reliable. Uh, and to be honest, I'm probably going to be purchasing more of the Ecobee sensors in the future because I have an Ecobee thermostat and this actually is a benefit to me. I can monitor the temperature in various rooms. If I'm in a room, it'll maintain that te the temperature of the house based on the room that I'm in. If you're not familiar with how Ecobee works, essentially there's a thermostat on the wall. Even though your 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 furnace may be a uh, a single furnace in there that you know heats the whole house to one temperature, well, it doesn't because your temperature in your house will vary depending on the registers in the room, how many windows that room has, things like that. So if it if it knows you're in the living room, it'll base the temperature on the house on the living room temperature. So it doesn't care if the bedroom becomes slightly hot elevated or it's not hot enough in the bedrooms. It's not gonna matter. It's gonna, it's gonna count where you're located. And so it senses motion and it knows where you are and it has the temperature sensor on those sensors in those rooms. This is a way to integrate not only sensor, but also a smart switch, a smart assistant, and 
uh, a nightlight. And there's a lot of things that this thing does. It's more expensive than these options because Casita, after you buy the, the initial package here, you can buy additional lights for about 50, 60 bucks. So you're talking about a 30 to 40 dollar upgrade to get to one of these. Um, and that's going to be, of course, to start. We'll see where the tip, where the, the price goes from there. But I'm looking forward to seeing where this actually takes us because Ecobee getting into this market is, is only a plus. It's only going to stifle more innovation is from what I can tell. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, post those below. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video. And hopefully we'll come back next week or so with another Tech Talk on a completely different topic. So thanks for checking us out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying till the end. And we'll see you soon.